And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Deep Sea Monsters. It's been a while since we've played this kind of deck, but it is a pretty sweet deck. And so let's bring it back. What we're doing today on this early stream, this Friday early stream, is I'm going to be playing four decks from the Twitch Rivals tournament that was this weekend, or I guess it was yesterday, which was Thursday. So not the weekend. Who knows what weekends are anymore? Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to be playing uh, this list here with some real interesting uh, card choices, ones that I wouldn't make myself. And so that's what I really like is I like playing uh, different uh, card selections and numbers and things that I wouldn't really do. You know, not a, like it doesn't not necessarily to get me out of the comfort level, but to really see if, um, you know, if there's like better things to be doing like. For example, like Lure the Depths, that's a card that I, I think I would just always just play three of, right? In a sea monster deck, just feels like this should be a three of, kind of the same with Maokai. So it's interesting to to kind of trim some of these numbers and play some different cards that I wouldn't really have. Like I wouldn't have all these salvages, I wouldn't play Riptide, I wouldn't play Jettison. But maybe those cards are going to really pay off, and so it'll be interesting to see how good those cards will be. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing that not only I, but a lot of people struggle, like basically everybody, like, I mean, I guess this is kind of true for everybody is that you have like pet cards that you just always put three of in decks like this. And you think, okay, well, if we're playing this, this, then we're, we're playing as many as we can, you know, we're playing a sea monster deck. We're playing as many lure the depths as we can. Um, and sometimes you have to just let it go. And sometimes you have to not play three of, of those kind of cards because actually you need other, you know, you need other cards in your deck. You need to kind of diversify your deck more instead of just playing three of everything. And so that's what I really like about this deck. And it's really interesting how many ones and two ofs there are in this list. I really felt like, like the person that uh, built this list really took a lot of time um playing this deck a lot and getting the numbers where they want to be you know like there's two thorny toes there's just one glimpse beyond and so on and, and i really like that and i appreciate that and so i want to give it a try myself i should i should uh also go look up exactly whose list this is so i can give them some credit that would probably be nice of me um i be believe it's pokrovok nope it is not never mind <laughs> wrong person oh that's embarrassing uh, Tien Kami. I don't know. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but yeah, Tien Kami. All right. Anyway, let's let's play their list of deep sea monsters. Let's uh, get our bilge water sleeves over in the cursed ruins, and we got any sea monsters in here. Uh, Gloom tooth, you're kind of sea monstery, I suppose. All right, let's. Let's play some Runeterra. Here we go. We're going to go play five games over in Ranked. See how the deck does. <laughs> yeah, you work from home also, so the days never change. Yeah, it's usually tournaments are on weekends. So I just started to say, you know, this weekend. And then I was like, wait a minute. Today's Friday. <laughs> no, I have not played League or... Uh, TFT uh, fight tactics. Is it true fight tactics? No, I, I haven't played either of those games. But are, you know. um, I I used to play Magic actually. So I, I've been playing card games for a really long time, and so I've switched over to this new card game that's uh, very fair, balanced, interesting, fun, all that kind of stuff. Swain Sejuani. Let's get rid of Grasp. I love Abyssal Eye, but I feel like I'm supposed to be mulliganing Abyssal Eye also. And we'll just keep these two. Cool. Got an Abyssal Eye back anyway. Yeah, I did. Yep, I got a haircut yesterday. I'll try anyway. Delicious. 
All right, so now we have good blocks on that thing. The winter's claw strikes. We don't really have good blocks on that thing. Hmm. A lot of toughness, or like a lot of one damage going around here. Deal one, deal one, deal one. Draw some new cards. Corruption everywhere. All right, that ruination could be real important. We can work our way up to that. All right, so if I play, play Thorny Toad this turn, so we can get the sapling. If I don't spend this four mana, you know, like. Playing Salvage would be nice, but if I don't spend it, then I can save it, and next turn we can have 9 mana, and I could Ruination. I tire of waiting. Lender. <laughs> Darn. Really hoping they'd play like Sejuani or Swain pre combat. Um. going down to 13. We just block here. Wait on this ruination. Because I feel like if I if I like let's say I like just double trump block and save as much life as possible, then um then they're just not gonna play anything. Like then I, I just ruination away these three things and they still have five cards in hand. Let the flames take you. I'm honestly not sure if there's a, a best deck to to climb to find them. I don't think there really is like one one singular best deck.
All right, so my plan is challenge the Crimson Disciple. For conquest, for empire. That doesn't make sense to attack with that. So they block with the four one that's about to die. Keep their four one alive. So I have two things die, so this levels up Maokai. So they have four cards left in their library. So now if we can you know, if we can keep, like, these cards in check, they don't have much left in their library, of course. If we can keep this in check. So, 11. Can't really do anything else this turn. Awesome. Well timed ruination. I like how we were patient and didn't didn't just throw the ruination out right away. We were able to play enough stuff besides that. And we were able to keep Maokai out there and level up Maokai first to eliminate most of their deck. And then Ruination. So that was really nice. Yeah, the yeah the ramp for Elyord's pretty tough. I have a War Mother's ramp. Yeah, so I have, I have a Freljord, you know, Shadow Isles ramp control, War Mother's ramp donation deck to play soon. I'll probably be playing that tomorrow. Yeah, like I'll be playing that tomorrow. Uh, deck code for this deck that we're playing. Uh, it's you know go to the go to that uh, that's the link to the deck list. There's the export button in the top right. I'm not sure exactly where it is on mobile. Leeson Z. They gotta send all this stuff back. It's just all expensive. Get some cheaper things. No, I don't have a Vlad Brom deck. Maybe somebody in chat does. Change the sleeves to... Alright, pink sleeves. We got a... Uh, point request to change the sleeves of next. So, like, Ionia? I'm guessing. It could be the Jinx sleeves also. We got a one drop, which is pretty cool. Come on, get two or three. Yuck. I guess we still get to play this. Zed, but then playing Demacia. Corruption everywhere. Hmm. 
And they didn't do anything last turn or this turn. Wonder what they got going on. Sea monster. Alright, so where are we at? We're at 20 cards left in library. This would make it 16, so we wouldn't be deep right away from playing that. Um, let's play the Abyssal Eye. No, my ruination. No. They're gonna have something that's pretty big. You know, with the jewel protector, so I'll have something that's plus three, plus three. Lee Sin. A pleasure to see you, master. What are we challenging? You? I suppose. Eh. You? I guess I could have played one of these two things first and made this deep. I could have just done another three points of damage. Fairly easily. Fourteen out of twenty five. Just not gonna get this Maokai to level up. We haven't really been uh, tossing sea monsters because they're kind of all in our our hand as far as Nautilus's level up is concerned. We're not really gonna be putting uh, sea monsters back into the deck. So I think my play right now is just play Jettison and then Nautilus. I don't even know if it's even worth playing Jettison. Maybe we just don't even cast Jettison. these treasures in our deck definitely feel like I don't know I kind of feel like they're gonna have like will of Ionia and bounce like whatever I play and so if I just play Nautilus I, I don't gain anything else interesting rally with Lee Sin that's pretty interesting yeah they got me Rally with Lee Sin. What is gained when you declare malevolence? Blood and salt. Yeah, I put one card back in there. Rip 
Riptide. Opponent surrender. Not the clutch Riptide. All right, we're two and zero. Oh. All right, so we had to change the sleeves to pink. So, Zaru, do you want Zaru? What's what sleeves do you want out of here? Do you want um, Jinx? Do you want? I mean, Ionia is not really pink. It's not really pink. These are the these are your options though. You know, Yasuo, Garen, Jinx, or one of these regions. Which sleeves do you want? Zaru doesn't answer. We'll go with these red ones. With Noxus. Close to pink. Probably the closest. Uh, deckless link giving a different deck. Okay, it looks like I didn't edit that. Thank you. All right, try try that deckless right there. Looks like it didn't get edited. Okay. Um. No problem. Garen Fiora. I wonder if we should keep Thresh. Thresh is, Thresh is good in this kind of matchup. Yeah, well, Thresh comes back. Because basically, it was, like, normally we wouldn't just, like, keep Thresh as, like, our only card and mulligan the other cards. But since we already know we have a two mana card to play and a three mana card to play, and, uh, and we already have that part of the curve taken care of. Then maybe we'd be able to afford keeping Thrash. Wow. They just didn't play Warchefs first and waited for me to attack and then play Warchefs? Man, I wish I just didn't attack. I wish I just didn't attack. Would have messed up this perfect curve. To the base. Oh, God. No one goes hungry. Okay. Well, how do how do these ones look, Zaru? Now you said pink. These are probably about as close as there are to pink. Danger. Hey, Mantist. Going harvesting. So if they try Barrier, we have Withering Whale. Okay, good. That's why I didn't play the Beast Below first. No. Uh. 
Ouch. Hmm. I'm gonna take a lot of damage this turn now. So my plan is uh, next turn to devour the depths, obliterate this Grizzled Ranger. But for this turn, I'm gonna be taking a lot of damage. Could have Withering Wailed instead of playing the Beast Below. Really hope this works. Really hope they don't have single combat. Really hope this works and we just get Grizzled Ranger out of here. Nope. Well. It's probably game. Yeah, I mean, it is game. Dang, that was a perfect curve, and I, I could have messed it up by just passing. You know, because they did have Tracker, Warchefs, Fiora, Grizzled Ranger, and then Bannerman. Um, but, you know, I could have taken out that Warchefs if I just didn't attack for one. I just, you know, I didn't really anticipate them to just pass priority to me. I attack for one, and then they play Warchefs. It's just, it's just such a risk. I just shouldn't have, I just shouldn't have attacked for that one. That would have been so much easier if they didn't have that Warshafts, for sure. Crazy, yeah. I mean, kind of lesson learned, I suppose. Uh, this deck that we're playing right now was Tian Kami's deck. That's how you pronounce it. From Twitch Rivals. What are we doing? Burn? Don't think I have time for a glimpse beyond against burn. So always be thinking, so kind of our lesson from that game is just always be thinking about what, you know, do you really need to Explosive. attack for that one damage? Or can you... I saved two life by making this block. Probably save more than two life by blocking something else that they have. Sure. That takes up their turn. They're not playing a threat. Yeah, like blocking that. We'd save three life.
so close to being able to obliterate that Boom Crew rookie, but obliterating the three ones also really nice. No. Oh, wow, they went that route? Oh, yeah, because the other... Yeah, right, right, the other route, it would still... It would still die. Um... Okay. Fresh is worth at least twice as much. Not bad. Not bad. And basically right now I just want to keep Grass the Undying available. Or we can Grass the Undying our Thorny Toad to gain life if need be. So I can play this and still have Grasp available. Austerity, please. Thanks, please. Play this, still have Grasp available. This Obliterate, it's been awesome. Obliterating those Legion Grenadiers. Eww, no. What? It's the worst thing to block. So close. I don't think this one card can do six damage to me. All right, then I was gonna play the the draw card and not play another threat out. We, we didn't need another threat up in play. We just need to, to draw more, see if we hit like another life gain card, and just in case, like in case they had. I don't, I don't even know. I mean, they would have like the, you know, the five mana deal four. And then I don't, I don't know what they would draw though. All right, three and one. Our deep sea monster is looking pretty good. This this list is looking really good. Still not super sold on the jettisons. We haven't done anything with those, but. Um, Overall, the deck's looking really strong. You know, perfect curve out Demacia beats basically everything. And I had the chance of just skipping my turn and maybe making a big difference. Ooh, looks like we have the, the mirror match. Uh, we don't know for sure exactly how long... Do I keep a Nautilus? Wow, really? What is this? We went from two pair to three of a kind. Those mulligans. Yeah, exactly. We want to find our Toss and Maokai. The thing is, is Nautilus can't... Like, Nautilus is pretty important because if they if they have, like, that, that uh, Maokai kind of thing and get rid of our deck... We do need to have like a Nautilus in hand to um, we need Nautilus in hand to put up like our sea monsters back. 
So it's, it's a real important late game card. Honestly, maybe I should keep it. Like, I probably should have kept it. I mean, I, I, I obviously wish I would have had it over any of these grass the undying would have rather had Nautilus. Oh, I guess you're right. Maokai probably does say obliterate the deck, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, it does obliterate. So it's not it's not tossed. But at least it is. At least we would be deep, and it would be easy to um Yeah, we would be deep, and so we would have an easy level up for Nautilus and get some back. But yeah, you're right. The ones that Maokai gets rid of have been obliterated. They are tossing a lot better than me. My mulligan of triple grasp the undying. Not so good. They've... They've tossed 15. I've tossed 8. They're gonna ruination. Okay, good. So they don't have Maokai either, so that's good. Ooh. be bad if they do have ruination just cast it right now that's not great either danger pays stare at the abyss it'll stare back I have 22 cards left. Yeah, I'm guessing Grass of the Undying is not very good in the mirror. Having three of them is probably a lot worse than what my opponent's been doing with a bunch of tossing and then Devour of the Depths. All right, down to 18. <laughs> yeah, right, Pod? The, the Pirate Lux video, YouTube video from yesterday? We did have a crazy first game. That was awesome. That deck was cool.
All right, we obliterated their eye. Atrocity. Forgot we had Atrocity. We haven't really seen that card. We saw it in like a an opening hand that we mulliganed, I think. But that's about it. possible I'm supposed to be waiting for next turn where I can have 13 mana where I can play this and atrocity. Okay, good. So I was worried about they just ruinationed. That'd be kind of bad. It's not like I just have lethal with atrocity. Cause remember, there's these decks play Grasp and Withering Whale. So we do have to be worried about those two cards, Grasp and Withering Whale. Eight cards. They're passing turn. No! Those were good cards. I would just feel really bad if I play this Abyssal Eye and then they cast Ruination. I would feel really bad. They haven't been playing at all like they have Ruination, so it would be a surprise that they had it. But still, I'd feel really bad. All right, cool. So if you missed, you got it. Good. Yeah, still have six. Okay. There you are. Thought I was gonna still have six. Okay, so yeah, so we still have six for atrocity if they do play something like that. So they have vile feast. I'm going for the win. Yeah! Alright, played around. Played around the Withering Wheel. The atrocity. I didn't expect us to win that game, honestly. Like, how the how it played out at the beginning, but they had so much tossed, but... They didn't have a champion. You know, they didn't, ha they didn't have Maokai. Yeah, they had no champions, and I had Thresh for a little bit, and then Maokai. 
I think I had Maokai. Maybe I didn't. But yeah, we had the uh, Nautilus um, Atrocity combo. That's pretty nice. Like, I, you know, I didn't have Atrocity in this kind of deck before. I, I, I like that. I think that's a good way to close out games. Also, especially when you get, you know, a 13-13 or just, you know, like these shipwreck quarters that are huge and that kind of stuff. Um, okay, yeah, I did have all three champs. So, yeah, that, that helped out. Um, and, yeah, I wasn't really missing Lure of the Depths. Uh, I can definitely understand having Jettison in the deck. Yeah, I know it's not it's not my favorite, but, um, yeah, I liked the numbers. The one Riptide was really nice. Uh, salvage, I don't know about a three of, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, this, this uh, felt like a really well-tuned deck that isn't, isn't what I would normally build with... Um, you know, with tons of one ups and two ups, but honestly, just in in decks in general, I have had a lot of success whenever I do make decks with tons of ones and twos like this. So maybe that's something that I need to just kind of consider in deck building in the future in this game is having decks with lots lots more ones and twos. With with only having forty cards in your deck, you really do you really do draw your one ofs quite a bit. Like, you know, I think like we saw Glimpse Beyond multiple times. We saw Lure the Depths multiple times, Riptide multiple times, Thresh, you know, that kind of stuff. So it is really valuable having access to those because <clears throat> there are there are times like where you really want a Ruination, for example, or you really want that Riptide. Um, you know, times that uh, you really want that Glimpse Beyond to get you those couple extra cards. And it's not something, you know, it's probably just something that you don't want, like, a hand filled with Glimpse Beyonds. You probably don't want a hand, you know, filled with Riptides or Ruination. But that first copy is uh, really valuable to have access to at different times. And so I think this has been a good, a good kind of learning experience with this deck is that something that I need to consider more while building decks instead of just kind of easily, all right, well, I want this card, so three of these, I want this card, three of these. And kind of spread out the numbers more. Like Maokai, I feel like I would always play three Maokais. But it was kind of nice having a Thresh. Yeah, there is that is true. There is risk with it being tossed in this kind of deck. But if you think about it, that's not a risk. Because tossing, what tossing does... Um, you obliterate the cards from the bottom of your deck. You're not drawing those cards on the bottom of your deck anyway. Like, that's just not, you know, you're you're not shuffling the deck. So the cards on the bottom of your deck, you're not drawing. So if, if it is, if it does get tossed, that means it was on the bottom of your deck where you weren't going to have it anyway. Does not actually a risk. It's a feels it can be a feel bad to know that it was on your the bottom of your deck, you know, like you toss like a ruination. Then but that also tells you, hey, you have ruination at the bottom of your deck, you're not gonna draw it. Don't plan on don't don't play in such a way to try to set up a ruination draw to keep you alive because you know that you don't have that safety net. Or you don't have you don't have that. So that's kind of good that it also gives you that, you know, the tossing gives you that information that you know more about the cards that you can draw because you, you know you know that like the ruination's gone or or whatever. So that's pretty interesting too. All right, so good start to the day. 4-1 with Deep Sea Monsters. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Uh, you know, feel free to comment on the deck. Let me know what you think of just like this uh, theory of playing more ones and twos because of the uh, different situations the games can present and uh um you know and and uh just the value of ones and two ofs all right that's it here for deep sea monsters though so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you for the next video